social media videos. Yes. They're, yeah. they're so yeah. cheeky and cool. <laughs> I love it. It's like totally tubular and awesome. I love it. It's, it's been really great. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Calling the meeting to order. June 14th. Comments from observers. Nobody in the room. Susie, any submitted comments? There are none. All right, let's move on. Uh, first item approval of the minutes from the regular meeting. So let's look at um, approval of the minutes from May 10th, the regular meeting, and then the annual meeting. Let's start with the regular meeting. Any corrections, additions to the minutes of the regular meeting of May 10th? If not, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let's move on to the annual meeting minutes of May 10th. Any corrections, additions, and that kind of a motion to approve? So moved. Second? <laughs> Somebody? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I'm going to kick the closed session meeting minutes to the end of the meeting in terms of all, all of that stuff because um, there's a lot there, but I think we can clean up a lot of it, but it's sort of tedious we'll look at them briefly and clean them up so rather than make everybody sit through that we'll take that to the end all right director's report sorry Eugene. um just one question oh, yeah, we sure. did we so we uh approved the regular minutes we approved the regular and, and the, the annual how about the closed session minutes for the last month was it were there closed session minutes for last month I don't think so. Oh, okay. No, there right. Okay. Okay. There. Just check. Right. Then that gets us to a director's report. All right. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see you. Um, let's see. Good news. We have a new building services manager, facility manager. Actually, today was his first day, um, and uh, his name is Vinny. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is sliding off. Good. Um, so uh, I, his name is Vinny Tangolini. He seems great. Um, we're really excited to have him. Um, I, I'll be working with him to kind of get him onboarded and, and settled in. Um, but I'm really happy that uh, that's been settled. Um, just to, I, it's, I feel like it's been a little bit of time since I kind of give you a little bit of um, building improvements, updates. Um, so not like major big stuff, but just little things here and there. So. Um, with the drought that we've been having, I know we got some rain recently, but for a while before that, we didn't get a lot of rain. So we're we're looking at our landscaping and tree maintenance plan, and kind of taking some steps to um, rectify some some things that kind of were, um, you know, as a result of the drought, like um, not looking so great, you know. So we're we're going to clean up the south courtyard, the kid children's uh, courtyard. Um, so both courtyards, I mean, and then some trees in the parking lot. We're going to be um, kind of pruning and resoiling just to get them a little healthier. Um, the let's see, the south courtyard trees. We're going to just kind of watch the water levels there and put some gator bags around them to make sure that they're not um, drying out. So in anticipation of a dry, hot summer. So. Um, we we made some uh, painting improvements. Just it's been two years, believe it or not, since uh, um, completion of the renovation. <laughs> I know time passes and um, time flies by, but the overall, I mean, when I walk around the building, it seems like the building is um, holding up really well. I hope you agree. The carpeting, the paint walls, everything, the shelving. Um, there were some areas of high traffic areas, like half bay restroom corridor, the MR um, gallery, um, the uh, like some areas in the youth restroom corridor so that we repainted. So um, it looks a, a lot better now. Um, let's see, light the roofing contractor came out just to perform a regular maintenance, and they identified just. A few issues like some punctures here, like small little ones, um, some like uh, lining that just needs to be reinforced, like just very routine uh, minor stuff that just happens over the course of like a winter, I think. So, so they took care of that already. Um, so, yeah. Any questions about anything related to the building? Just pause there for a sec. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. Um, I'm just sorry. Uh, have sure. we had any ongoing plumbing issues? Because I feel like yes. that's been every month. I feel like we've talked about it, but yes. nothing was mentioned here. So I just wanted to check in. Yes. On that. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. Um, we are looking into. A few. We haven't had any. I shouldn't even say that. But um, <laughs> we, have, we haven't had any uh, plumbing issues. But uh, recently. But it's also because we haven't been using our MR public restrooms um, for about a month or so. We've just um, and it's okay. Like we we have the four rest uh, the restrooms in the cafe area, the restrooms in the youth area, and the second floor. So we have a lot of restrooms. Um, we're the reason I was waiting on opening those is because we were looking at a couple of different solutions that may resolve the issue once and for all. And one is, one option is to try to try to change the the flush uh, valve basically on some of those toilets in the MR area so that it's a little bit more powerful. Um, I, now that we have, I've been waiting for the new building manager to come to talk it over with him. And the other option is to try to. Um, take out all of our paper towel dispensers because we know for sure that that's what's leading to issues with the toilet, people throwing tape paper towels down the toilet. So we might remove some of those, like from key restrooms that we've been experiencing issues with, and then install hand dryers. So we got a quote and everything, and now that, like I said, Vinny's here, I'm going to um, look over all the options with him and see what he thinks. You know, but but fingers crossed, I think that um, hopefully we'll get something resolved by the end of the summer and then, you know, um, just hopefully open everything back up. We, we can open them up, honestly, now, but we've just been really cautious and without a facilities manager, I just sure. didn't want to invite more trouble, you know, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Juneteenth, uh, there's a celebration on uh, Saturday the 17th. It's coming up this weekend. It's at Oakton Park, I believe. Um, it's going to be great. Um, for a few years now, we've had Juneteenth events, and they've been fantastic. Um, the library's been a part of like a larger group that's been working with um, uh, a group called Skokie United. I think many of you are familiar with them in Skokie. Um, they do really great community work, um, help uh, plan and kind of spearhead this event. But the park district's involved, uh, D69, uh, the township. Um, high school, I mean, Village of Skokie, us. So um, I'll be there um, in and out probably because I'm actually librarian in charge that day here at the library. So I, I have to mostly be here. But I'm hoping to, if it's a slow day, um, spend as much time as I can at the Juneteenth celebration. So Nancy Ken Phillips will be there. And um, I want to say we have another staff member who's um, going to be there as well, just happy, helping out in general. So. And I've heard from some of you um, expressing interest in joining. I encourage you to come on out and, and celebrate Juneteenth with all of us. Um, let's see. Yeah, and the other thing I wanted to mention was actually the PR Exchange Awards. Um, it was just, it's nice. We don't do our work to just receive awards, but when it happens, it's really nice and it's affirming, you know. And, uh, the quality of the work that our staff do, um, which we know about, but you know, it's nice to be recognized. So Jane, Hannah, our communications and multimedia engagement manager, recently informed me that um, the library won, or her team really won three PR Exchange Awards from ALA. So the, we'll be receiving those at um, ALA annual conference uh, in two weeks. So um, I, I provide a little bit of information there, but. You're probably familiar with these pieces, you know, because you probably mm -hmm. got them in the mail or picked them up at the library. So, so that was nice to hear. Um, yeah. Is it? Do we ever, you know, feature these? Mm -hmm. Like whether they're on the website? Yeah. Or we do on social media with that. I think we we do normally. I, I don't know specifically what the plan is for this, but. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe I'll maybe I'll encourage Jane to do that because maybe she won't want to like pat herself on her own back when I do it in public. Or, but um, I think that that's totally um, appropriate. Yeah. You know, you know so. I'd love to see like you know we oftentimes win a lot of awards that yeah. come up, and I yeah. think that that's important that we you know publicize that. Mm -hmm. and these are great things yeah. that that our staff and our community you know our our staff work so hard for them you know, and I think that we should. Yeah, and the and the community should be proud of the library. Yeah. You know, it's a public good in the community, and so, so I totally agree. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a note. 
Any other questions about anything in the report or anything else? I just had a question. We were having an informal chat about mm -hmm. it, but I know the summer reading program kicked off. So is there any just high-level update on how that's been going since we started? I loved all of the videos yeah, and the whole vibe. It's very cool. It's that uh, the 80s vibe, I think. Um, so cool. yeah, I, I think from my perspective, it's done well, but I don't have uh, the numbers yet. I haven't heard any updates from the first week or so. Yeah, I don't you know. we'll really have numbers till we get to the point where people check in sure. to get their book. But um, a lot of the flyers have been taken. There's a lot of excitement. We saw an uptick in traffic last week. Have you seen the mosaic? On the first floor, I saw the social creating. media post with the little stickers yeah. that you put on it. That's been going faster than we thought it was going to. Around that, so oh, yeah. yeah, it's it's been positive so far. I was just so excited. I was out walking with my dog, and I saw these kids getting other yeah. car appearance, and they had their library oh. stack of books and their little posts, their little mm -hmm. cards. They're ready to go. They're ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Shabna, Shabna just said that there were a few okay. kids doing the new Yeah, there were a few kids uh, putting up their stickers as I was walking oh, in. Oh, that's yes. so cool. <laughs> cool. Excellent. We thought that would last a little longer, but people have been so enthusiastic <laughs> that we're running out of stickers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a puzzle when you just have to finish it. Yes. You know, I feel like there's just that urge. <laughs> yeah. But I want to mention, actually, I, I saw Van um, uh, today, and it, Van created that. You know, it wasn't really? like we just bought it or something oh. because it's Van's original. Um, graphic designs, you know, for the program, you know, so it's really I know cool. that's impressive, yeah. So I just love it. I'm Maybe that so will excited. be an award winner next year. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Association of talking to Laura. <clears throat> I know we're doing Juneteenth, and yes. it's the first time Skokie's officially in Rio, which is great. <clears throat> the board got a question about <clears throat> um, if the library does Mother's Day and Father's Day, and I don't know if you guys want to comment on. Yeah, um, I think that Mother's Day and Father's Day, Father's Day are all are known. Obviously, you know um, it's uh, not a, like kind of a a new thing. Obviously, um, we we have many books, and we might have some occasional displays on kind of motherhood and fatherhood and parenthood in general. But I don't know if we have regularly had. It doesn't seem like we've had regular programming on those specific. Um, Days or holidays, but something we can consider moving forward since we had a comment about it. So. Yeah, I do know if you just do a search yeah. on our website, there's over 150 books on Mother's Day, there's over 150 mm -hmm. on Father's Day, so there's plenty of materials. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's something to consider. You know, yeah. All right, anything else on director's report? No, then let's move on to. <coughs> approval of the May disbursement report, so pages uh, 6 through 12. I had a question on 6120 okay. on the Moral Courage Project. Yes. Yeah, speak to that. Yeah, absolutely. So that is. Um, that is a program actually that is designed to train um, people in facilitating conversations that go beyond like um, divisions, right? Like kind of like different viewpoints. So there are other types of programs, but this one is by Urshad Manji, it's, it's her name. And um, she's, I think, well known. She has a, a book that she's um, published about this topic as well, maybe multiple books. but. Um, uh, Maybe a year, a year ago, or a little, a year and a half ago, a bunch of our staff went through a moral courage, um, like online training, like self-paced training, just to see, you know, what we could learn. And a lot of us, and then we had like discussion groups afterwards. I might have even mentioned it in one of my past director's reports, like eighteen months ago, but it it went really well, and we were encouraged by the content and the, the the delivery of the teaching of like how to talk to other people and facilitate dialogue uh, when there's like kind of different viewpoints. Um, so this opportunity came up to have two mentors, like certified essentially, um, to teach and like um, learn more about how to lead these types of sessions. So um, Annabelle Mortensen and Amber from our CME team, they're going to be taking this. They're, they're actually already starting. Um, they started, I believe, in, I want to say, maybe May. Yeah. And so they're going through this program. 
and then we're hoping to like see what it could do for possibly like internally, um, possibly as like public programming, um, possibly working with community partners and bringing this content to our community that way. So and the organization. So it's part of like it fits in with um, what we were talking about with our strategic plan of like creating connectedness and just like making feel people feel belonging. And it's obviously, as we all know, such a huge part of like kind of the world we're all experiencing with like just not being able to talk to others with different viewpoints. So that's in a nutshell what that project is. It's called the Moral Courage Project, but it's essentially training for two staff members. So it's like multi-month training. So, so after them getting certified, you're looking at utilizing that certification yeah. with them for both community events, possibly? We, or we don't more know. like staff based? I think it's both and or. Um, we don't know yet, but um, this is the first time we're going through it, so we want to get their perspective on what they're learning and how it might fit. But the conversation leading up to the start of the program and asking them to participate is mm -hmm. was kind of open-ended. Like it could be related to community partners, mm -hmm. it could be related to programming for the just the general public in our community. It could be related to um, things that we try to do internally within yeah. our staff. So, mm -hmm. Um, and do you know, are there other libraries that have utilized this at all? It's kind of new, and there are, um, there are other libraries that are participating. I, I, or maybe there's, in this cohort, there's one other I know for sure. Um, I want to say Edmonton, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah. I'd be interested in, like, an update. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I, I actually wanted to participate myself. Um, I regret not having the time to do so, you know, but maybe next time I'll try to participate myself. But yeah, I'm excited about it. Okay, yeah. Sounds good. Thank mm -hmm. you. Other questions about disbursements? Here. Um, Richard, yes. I wanted to ask you about a few vendors that, mm -hmm. at least to me, are new on our okay, sure. disbursements. So in, um, 6250 Technology and mm -hmm. Network, mm -hmm. Bamboo, HR, LLC. Bamboo is our, um, it's our software, our, our web platform that we use, and that's um, all for all of our recruiting, hiring, um, let's see, it's for onboarding. Um, so it's Leah and her team eventually will. You know, when we fill that um, team, they'll be using it. We, we've used it for years, actually. Um, I don't know, maybe, what, five years, four years? So. At least five. Yeah. So yeah, it also just, contains all our digital personnel records. Okay. Um, also under that section, Bridge All Libraries? Uh, yes, that's... <coughs> That is, um, oh gosh, I can't, hold on one second. That's, that's uh, named for something very obvious that I just uh, can't remember. Yeah, so, there's so many men there. No, no, I, it's, it's together. once I see it, I'll be uh, in help. Oh my gosh. One second. Oh, that's Collection HQ. Oh, yeah. It's it's the stuff I knew it was gonna be obvious. It's a software that we use our access services department use to basically have all the information they need to maintain our collection. They can identify what's not circulating and what's the term that they use? Like grubby. Yes. I don't know if this, they still use that term. Yes. yes. Term, but, but yeah, it, it really helps uh, our selectors. Um, kind of determine what it should be probably looked at, maybe even or weeded, or or what we should be buying more of. Oh, I see. So, yeah. That's very valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also, I have a question for you on 6060 building grounds. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Atomatic Mechanical Services. There's a couple of entries there, one mm -hmm. for almost 3,500, one about 15,500, 15,600. Mm -hmm. I was just curious, like, what, what that relates to, and mm -hmm. is it some kind of maintenance on something, it seems like, with the building? Um, that, the Atomatic is, um, you'll see them every month, basically, yes, because it's that. our HVAC contractor, so there are preventative maintenance contractors, so they will we'll have maintenance, um, regular maintenance performed on the entire HVAC system, and then when there's an issue, you know, there might be some extra charges for them to repair things. Okay. So we had issues with, like, it, it, sometimes you'll see these um, charges kind of spike up when we're changing season. So, like, when we're changing into the cooling season, they have to, like, set, fill, you know, the, the cooling towers and get the chiller ready, and so it's extra, like, so repairs, repairs and repairs. Malfunction, it was just maintenance, it sounds like, for our um, AC systems, that type of thing. Um, hold on one second. Do you want me to jump yeah, in? There? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, with the 15,000, there was a, vestib a vestibule thermostat relocation. Um, we installed two boiler emergency shutdown switches. We recharged our ch chiller too with the stuff that you have to put in there, the R134A. That's what most of the fees were for. So it sounds like maintenance. Yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. The way I yeah. see the disbursements, it's not just about the disbursements, right. it's actually telling us about you know, what's, what's happening, happening in the building. Yeah. <laughs> so when I see those kinds of charges, yeah. I'm more curious is it maintenance or is it some kind of a malfunction that had to be repaired? But it sounds like it's just general. <laughs> It's a combination of both, honestly. You know, like when they do maintenance, they discover issues that need to be addressed, and then they perform that work and then right. they pay extra. Right. So, okay. yeah. Very good. yeah. Thank you for that. The two boiler switches are uh, we have two boilers downstairs that were, they, we, now we have an emergency shutdown switch basically that was installed. Okay. So it's just more of a safety measure. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. I also had just one final question. I think it's under professional services 6020, mm -hmm. but it's HR source. Mm -hmm. And just made me curious mm -hmm. um, do we have plans to hire a yes. Yes. manager? Right, so it's been a while, so I was just curious are we outsourcing? We are um, receiving then? extra help from an uh, HR like uh, company, you know, okay. HR source. We're a member of HR source, like most libraries are in this area. Okay. And one of their services is when, if you're kind of down some staff, they can temporarily fill in with freelance HR staff, you know, basically, so, mm -hmm. or contract HR staff, I should say. And then, so we, we use them for supplementing our needs right now, but we have plans. We're actually probably gonna post a couple of HR position related positions in the next week. Yeah. Hopefully tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there a plan to hire someone to perform the HR manager role again? Or we might not call it exactly that. We're still discussing, but we're we're finalizing all that. Yeah. So, well, one one piece of it will be like recruitment and training, and another piece will be the HR yeah. kind of specialist yeah. role. Yeah, right. like benefits administration, exactly. overseeing our HRIS, which is Bamboo HR, right. and overseeing like our payroll system, um, which is also a timekeeping system. So, so this company has been performing those like HR specialist functions? Yes, for they've been months helping months us now. with recruiting, setting up interviews, hiring. And all the benefits yeah. and they've been doing all that for us. Some of that stuff, um, Leah's been doing a lot of it. Blythe has been helping out. Um, Laura, so we're all pitching in. Okay. Yeah. We, well, trust me, we want to get this yes. settled. <laughs> it's just, um, you know, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions about disbursement? <clears throat> Matt, can I have a motion to approve disbursement report? So moved. Second? Second. All right, since it's money, we have to do it individually. Michelle? Yes. Mary? Yes. Ella? Yes. Mira? Yes. Shabnam? Yes. I vote yes, and it's six nothing, yes. Moving on to the consent agenda, which is 
pages 13 through 26. So it includes the monthly reports, but not the annual reports. That's all part of the consent agenda. So it's financial statements and the monthly reports, 13 through 26. Any questions, comments? Richard, anything you want to highlight in there? Mm, I don't think so. Something that I really liked um, in looking at the patron engagement and circulation mm -hmm. statistics mm -hmm. was just that overview at the top, mm -hmm. the narrative piece yes. of it of just, you know, um, of looking at the data. I thought that was very helpful to be able to get a great picture of what's happening data-wise. So thank you for that. totally agree. And we're, we're going to make this a regular thing, so, <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then I just wanted to flag on the general operating fund since the fiscal year just yes. started. There, there were two line items where there's 92% of the year remaining, but um, if you look at technology and network, we have only 59% of the budget remaining, and then maintenance of equipment only 45%. So just making sure that those expenses were planned to be kind of top heavy at the beginning of the fiscal yes. year. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And that, uh, it's, I'm glad you brought that up because I know we have um, a new board member as well, and Ella. Like this, this comes up every year actually because, um, especially in the first one, um, at the start of the fiscal year, we have just like a tech subscription heavy like um, payout basically of like annual subscriptions, um, like we saw in the disbursement report, like things like our HR system and that kind of thing. That's a one time payment for the year, so it's always. Um, Top, uh, heavy at the beginning, but it, it all evens out. Yeah, and Mark is very good at our IT manager kind of um, monitoring his budget. So, okay. um, and the business, uh, the building, mm -hmm. our maintenance of equipment. That's a, a, a biblioteca. Uh, that's a one charge, one time charge at the beginning of the year. That's most of that line item. So, okay. yeah. and then I just had a question. It's mm -hmm. not as relevant, but if you look at um, for it's hard for me to see. See which item it is. I think it's for research and learning. If you look at the percent of budget remain for the uh, 522, mm -hmm. it says 92% slash 100%. What is that? Research and learning were two separate line items oh, last I see. fiscal That's year. That's right, and then we yeah, combine them into them, one. Yeah. Okay, got it. I can check that out. I just thought that you might want to see it, which is when I presented it to Richard why I did it that way. No, that's fine. I just okay. wanted clarity on why it was split for one year and then why it was combined for another year. So that's fine. I just wanted to mm -hmm. understand that a little bit more. And, we, and I asked like the sh shade that last column just to make it extra clear that that is last year's um, yes. status. Yes, that's why and it's grayed out. Year. No, no, yeah. for sure. That's why yeah. I was like, eh, maybe not quite as important, but I wanted to understand sure. why the shift yeah. year over year with how we were calculating yeah. that. Good question. I, if it's okay, we'll keep it that way. And yeah, then, that's fine. Um, And the one thing I wanted to call out too that I thought was kind of cool was just, um, I liked the statistics for the childhood monthly email. Mm -hmm. To me, that was really impactful because mm -hmm. I think it really shows, I and mean, with the open rate and the click through rate and all of that, just how much parents and guardians really do rely on the library for early childhood education. Mm -hmm. I think when you compare that just to the overall email, I mean, it's pretty substantially different. So, mm -hmm. I mean, kudos to the that department doing that new podcast. I just think it's a really great resource for parents and guardians and anyone involved in a child's life. Yeah. It's just great. Yeah, I totally agree. Thank you for pointing all that out. I, I love the new podcast too, so it's a lot of fun to listen to. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> the summary at the beginning, and it'll, we'll see it later in the annual, so mm -hmm. noting a huge drop in audio visual. Yeah. Uh, so physical. 67%. Mm -hmm. drop which we're assuming is streaming etc that to me seems like a very switch or is that does the library start to reconsider how much we focus on that or how we yeah deal with that when it, it was being used heavily uh, not and I don't know the yeah, I think that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I think we'll, well, we knew this was coming, yeah. like even before yeah, the pandemic, not you know, yeah. And, and, and we haven't done anything wrong, it's just yeah, a shift yeah. in technology. It's just a sign of the times, you know, with how people consume um, uh, movies, music, television. 
Um, it's a good question. I think it's something that we need to keep thinking about. I don't know if we have like all the answers, you know, but Laura, do you want and to add we anything? have made adjustments over the last couple of years to how much within the physical materials budget, how much goes to audiovisual versus books. We've tweaked those categories. Yeah. We've also made adjustments to how many copies of DVDs we're ordering. So in the past, there would be a big release and maybe we'd get 60, 70 copies of something huge, like a Star Wars movie mm -hmm. or something. And we've really adjusted that down. A lot of things right now, they go to streaming first. They might be on yeah. Disney Plus before they even come out on DVD. So there's not this sort of big um, hoopla around new DVD releases. So yes, we have made hoopla some adjustments. Yeah, hoopla. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, speaking of hoopla, we also are increasing yeah, the <laughs> increasing the um, amount of money that we're putting towards hoopla over the past you know, yes. yeah. seven eight years. You know, so uh, yeah. So it's shifting. Yeah, yes. it's definitely shifting. It's a uh, industry wide, obviously, you know, thing that's happening. Um, and, and this is kind of interesting, just to remind everyone who was here or, or, or share this with those who weren't here for the renovation process, the reason why we situated the physical AV where it is at the center of the first floor is because that if those shelves kind of decreased over time or even just sort of eliminated at any point, that's a really prime area for more seating, more tables, like it can really be converted easily to a usable space. Um, so that's, we were planning ahead we were for, always thinking about I know, that, right? Yeah. Because we knew that these numbers were going to continue to right. shift in this way. Right. So just, it was accelerated, I think, because of the pandemic. And, mm -hmm. and I also just want to point out what I've heard from Laura and Annabelle and others, like a lot of the streaming services, their content isn't, doesn't, it never makes it to DVD mm -hmm. or Blu-ray. So it like limits what we can buy and offer, unfortunately. So it's a actually it's a problem to access, you know, for people who might not be able to afford all these streaming services. So. And, and I do want to point out the raw numbers of Cirques. We still circulate almost thirteen thousand DVDs a month from the adult collection alone. So stuff's still moving, just not at the rate it was mm -hmm. five six years yeah. ago. Yeah, it's kind of a sign of how massive the numbers were mm -hmm. prior. Mm -hmm. when we were searching just enormous amounts of physical AV. Yes. And, and, yeah. yeah. And I had emailed Richard just asking, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't book the data, but I mean, I love digging into that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. just looking. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, <laughs> AV encompasses a really large breadth of products, right? I mean, you've got DVDs, Blu-rays, movies, television shows, books on, you know, audio, yep. it's really everything. So I would just be curious of general trends within those categories, because to your point, I think that means we can, I don't know, like when I check out audio visual, I'm just thinking, I'm, you know, consumer group of one, I think a lot of the older, more classic movies you can't find on streaming, for example, or if you do, you have to pay three or four dollars to get that, right? So I will come to the library to get that classic movie for free. But if it's something like a new release or a television show, that is something that I could get for streaming. Right. So I'm curious if those trends are reflective in what people are checking out. I would venture to guess that, I bet music is probably on one of the biggest declines because I think streaming services for music is often free. You can get through you know, Spotify and whatnot. And that was even earlier than um, like the visual AV stuff, you know, like the... Totally. Yeah, that's been around for a long time now. For sure. So I would I would bet that that's declining at a faster rate than say audiobooks or certain types of, of movies. For sure. So I don't know. It just might be worth digging into to see yes. how you want to shift the collection over. Here. Yes. And um, as part of the renovation, there were some space shifts already anticipating some of this, particularly around audiobooks um, and CDs. The footprint shrink. I continue to be amazed at the number of people who do come in and check out CDs. Oh, yeah. There are still some moving, um, but yes, it's significantly less than it was back I before all the streaming services. Yeah. So. I just, I love, I'm such a date, I love looking at this stuff, <laughs> but I was just curious. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think she really wants to see this. I really yes, want to see yes, that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should have lunch with Laura and just like have yeah. spreadsheets, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, bring on the spreadsheets. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right, any other questions about consent agenda, comments, observations? Um, I love the post about the library book being returned. By the way, and the amount of mm -hmm. the the amount of reach of fifteen thousand people. I think that's really 
kind of like a neat thing to, to see one of these things really, you know, spark a big interest. Um, the video was cool. I literally had no idea that that's what happened behind the scenes. It was really very techy, but it was very cool. <laughs> Yeah, the, those I think fun stuff like that where you get like a peek inside the library world is appealing to a lot of people who love the libraries. Richard, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, the backyard movie bundle. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard a lot of buzz about it in the community. Mm -hmm. How's it going? I don't actually know we have the a very long wait list for okay. each of the kids. Um, so cool. Yeah, they, they are really cool. Um, they're also very large, so we're a little reluctant to just buy a whole plethora of them because in the off season <laughs> to put them somewhere it's but, a massive but we screen, are yeah. you know, looking into monitoring the number of poles we have pull this on each one right now so um, very popular is the answer to your question <laughs> how, how big is the screen it's large it's it's big it's yeah. meant to be you set up some chairs in your backyard and you all are watching a movie on a yeah. or at a park or screen. something yeah. or okay have you, but you said you've heard uh, comments about it, or oh yeah, okay. Like people There's... are just you know like, hey, did you know that the Skokie Public Library really? has this, okay. and you know I want to sign up, and I want to sign up, and I'm like, okay, okay. Sure, people this lunch is... with their neighbors. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a summer, perfect for summer. You know? That'd be a great block party. A lot of oh, people in yeah. yeah. do yeah. block parties. Like, yeah. what a great checkout. I don't know if we could ever encourage patrons, but this could be such a neat social media thing too, where you ask yeah. patrons who check out some of these um, more unique things, like how do you use the Skokie Library? I don't know if we could yeah. ever use that type. Obviously, we have to get authorization, but it'd be so neat to see patrons actually like use it, it share somewhere. that content, yeah. and then blast that out and yeah. see how other people use the library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally right. Yeah. Anything else? Then we can just approve consent agenda by voice vote, group vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay aye. with that. On to the annual reports now. You want to take them as a group, Richard, or you want to separate them out? I think we can just take them as a group, but we can feel right, any so questions or comments. But um, these, Susie, correct me if I'm wrong, but these don't get approved or anything, right? They're just, no, they don't it's just more of FYI. So it's page 27 through 39. It's general operating fund, reserve fund, bond service, bond proceeds, excess services, learning experiences, patron engagement, annual dashboard. So a wide range of and, and just Yeah, and just a reminder that um, there are still more to come. We just, uh, for the board's mental health, you know, we try to <laughs> separate and yeah, exactly. Yep. I did. I don't think I did that one year, and I heard about it. So I was like, <laughs> never again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a better. That's a nice way to say it. Leave it to And you don't like two hundred page board packets, right? So. Right. So questions, comments, observations on all the wonderful work. It's just great to read it all and see how it's laid out. I found it to be very informative. Yeah, I think our staff have been doing a really good job of just kind of like reflecting on the year and, and bringing it into like a concise mm -hmm. two-pager, you know? So I'm amazed at um, when that happens, you know? Because it really, I mean, they are, honestly, our department managers could write really long, long reports on all the details of what's happening. This is just kind of very concise summary, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And Blythe, I just want to point out, as usual, has done a great job of managing our finances. The, the first three reports are, um, or four reports are related to the financial annuals, you know, that Blythe prepares. And mm -hmm. this is just basically like- The whole year. The anymore. whole year condensed into like a summary, obviously. You, these are numbers that you, you, you see month to month, you know. But, on so, page 32, is yes. that in order where it says top circulating physical collection sections? Because I just want to call it, I don't know we were just talking about audiovisual, <laughs> but the DVD, adult DVD feature film actually supersedes adult fiction, if that is in the correct I order. Wow. So although we are seeing significant declines, if this is in order, this is still, I mean, that's the yeah. number one category for adults because the first four are all kids' things. So I just yes. found that very interesting. So that's why I was saying the raw numbers of SIRF yes. are still really high. Now, adult fiction does not include new fiction, and it's not going to include things that are on oh. the display tables because those will have a different location code category. But we're talking about all those rows of stacks of books yes. in the fiction area. Okay. That's what that category represents. So, yes, DVDs are higher. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So fast. Yeah, when you look at the percent drop, it, it deceiving actually because you might think, oh well, it's hardly anything, but then you look at the wrong numbers. Yeah. And, and does DVD include Blu-ray? No, that's a different. Okay, so that's so. also very interesting too. Mm -hmm. um, just, I'm sorry, I just got you <laughs> Don't apologize, this is great. We're, we're going no, to get, just, we're gonna so get really, you the numbers. No, it's okay. very, yeah. It so relates to like my professional job, you know, oh, looking okay. for trends and understanding the ins and outs and when you decide to stop selling a product yeah. when you want to launch something new. So it's very, very similar. Yeah. So that's really, just interesting. Honestly, you really should stop by and, um, yeah. and uh, take a look at the numbers with Annabelle and Laura. And, People, I'll book. skip that meeting, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. Eyes will glaze over. Eyes. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. No, but I just, I just think it's all really interesting. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I, I think typical in like a contract service contract like this or for HVAC services or cleaning or whatever so it's usually like in the three percent range you know so and that's just kind of cost of labor probably you know factored in in supplies so yeah so we could just approve a one-year contract or three-year or none mm -hmm. tonight Richard's proposing approving three years <coughs> locking in the two and a half percent and we'd still have to vote second year or third year mm -hmm. when the money came up I don't I don't think so no, uh, yeah just speak that, yeah there. Unless the board, I mean, I can certainly provide a reminder or, or something if the board really wanted to, but um, you could approve it right now. We'll make a memo, a note in our you know, yeah. uh, memos. I just had a question, which just came me. So I'm thinking about a possible third floor renovation where part of like that might not be usable. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. how does that affect the cleaning contract if like the scope mm -hmm. of work changes, you know, um, or does that affect it? Uh, it would affect it um, because the well I would say it would affect what we ask them to work on so like when the th that's a great question if the third floor is um, basically out of Correct. use by yes. the staff and it's on, under the construction managers um, you know authority basically up there we wouldn't send them up there obviously you know so are we still we would, paying for that though? well i would propose that we would have them do more on the first and second floor um to um kind of get ahead of certain areas like i know we, we talked a little bit about like detailed cleaning and stuff yes i feel like we can always use more <laughs> cleaning you okay. know and we can always kind of use more vacuuming and more wiping down surfaces or like shelving and so it would just kind of like keep i would propose keeping it at the same but we could, I mean, we can kind of see what happens, you know, and if we feel like it's really not um, at the level we need, then we can always go back and just, I'm, I'm sure I can talk to them. Like I said, we can even cancel the whole thing. And so we, we could just, amend, yeah. or we could cancel. I'm sure that they'll be um, open to that. You know. My thought was, is if there's three floors and a whole floor is not under use, I personally yeah. do not want to pay for the same amount of money for one floor to not really be clean. Yeah. With the exception of like, let's say it's really messy up there and then it starts tracking more stuff downstairs and that's a whole different story. Um, it's hard to tell, I mean, that's why I wanna kinda of keep the door open to possibly just keeping it at the same levels with the four people each night and doing more and shifting their responsibilities to take, take on more in the first and second floor um, because like at, when we did construction during the renovation, it got dusty. It, you know, it, okay. it was just kind of like, you know, we have to see how it how it feels. You know? okay. But also, the third floor is not the main part of their work now uh, okay. because it's it's not obviously as used as heavily used as the first and second floor. Um, there are fewer. It's just one bat, one and a half bathrooms almost. You know, I would say. You know, so um, or. Well, one main bathroom for the men and women, and then um, in, the, in the center, and then we have an admin restroom. So there's not a whole lot um, kind of that takes up their time on the third floor. I think it's just more of a quick sweep. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? If not, so I want to make a motion about not approving, approving for a year, approving for three years. What would you like? Motion to approve three-year contract for a um, complete cleaning company for $424,440. Second? Anybody? Second. All right. Uh, and since it's money, we vote individually. Michelle? Yes. Mary? Yes. Ella? Yes. Mira? Yes. Shabnam? Yes. Yes as well, so that's 6 nothing. Thank you very much. It's approved. Yeah. All right, and moving on to the approval of the administrative copier replacement on page 59. Yes, very exciting um, <laughs> topic, I know. <laughs> Riveting, I, I'm sure that you all had enjoyed reading my memo on this, or Mark's memo on this. Um, I mean, I think it's pretty... And we deferred the tedious stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah, saving this for the best for last, right? Um, no, this is pretty straightforward, honestly. It's uh, our, uh, 
a heavily used admin copier. Many of you might have seen it if you visited our um, admin office. Um, we were actually planning to um, replace it in 2021, but we got a few more years, a couple more years out of it um, because it didn't get used a lot during the pandemic or less used. So um, Mark and um, his staff, uh, I know Susie was involved with this conversation, Blythe helped out, um, there was an analysis of like whether we should lease, um, um, buy, ultimately I, um, Mark is recommending that the board approve the purchase of a new copier, it's just essentially kind of just a replacement of the existing one, the same type of copier. Um, at $30,784, so um, there you could see uh, the attachments have like different quotes and that kind of thing. There is that um, cost per copy uh, maintenance kind of fee that is attached as well, so that's part of it as well, but that's, we don't exactly know what that will be. It's an estimate, so right now I'm asking for the approval of the copier machine. So. Do we own the current copy or are we leasing the current? Copy? We own it. Um, so I asked Mark what would happen if, with that, you know, That's do what we I was get yeah, ask, what are we doing with do it? we get a credit or whatever? And um, <laughs> and he said that you know honestly it's out of, um, it's like it's not being supported anymore. It would actually probably not it's get, <laughs> yeah, it'll probably not get anything almost, you know. And he, the way he put it was. Um, if they agreed to take it away for and not charge us, he would actually consider that a win. So, <laughs> so. I mean, a lot of people yeah. would like to see a whole away of it. <laughs> yeah, if someone needs a piece of furniture, like a new <laughs> desk or something, maybe we can use that. But yeah, I, I don't think we're going to get anything for that, to be honest. So, is the plan then to recycle that? Like, turn like what? What's the plan to? I, well, I, I, the, well, my hope is that this company that we buy it from will take away the old one, and then okay. they'll hopefully responsibly. Usually um, tech companies have um, like IT recycling, you know, looking for computers and that kind of thing where they, yeah. And then what's the lifespan of this, of the like projected lifespan of something like this? I think it's about seven years or so. I mean, we get, we stretch it, you know, or maybe it's like five and we try to get as much life as out of it as possible. The cost estimates on the table were based on five-year estimates. Does, does it include servicing? <coughs> so the, the maintenance is, from what I, my understanding, is the maintenance is based on the cost per copy. Like, uh, so it's like associated with that. So that's why if you see page 60, um, you can see how much um, it would end up costing if we like based on what we think we might use it for you know, does that make sense mm -hmm. so it, but that's something that we don't know yet so there's a footnote at the bottom that might help as well of page 460. and when will you know which one you're going to be using it for i guess uh, well, well, every it, it tracks it, and oh, so I yeah, see. Okay. yeah, and then it reports it back and out, it and then out. yeah, it calculates it. it, and then it's a charge. Yeah. Okay, so then when you look at like when I looked at the our budget for this for FY twenty four, twenty twenty four, our capital line is fifty thousand, so that pretty much takes most of it, right? Do we have any other capital projects that we need to? Really we, need? Well, we do potentially, you know, with the. Um, the renovation project, we have the chiller replacement, of course, but remember we have that, the capital line that's represented in our operating budget mm -hmm. is just a tiny portion of what we plan yes, to I use. See. Yeah, we have appropriated, um, like what is it, 6.4 mm -hmm. um, from the reserve fund mm -hmm. to possibly use for capital improvements this year. So, okay, yeah. so this is kind of just that, that set aside one within the right, right. general operation. Yeah. Right. And also, just to let you know, on the other line now, the maintenance of equipment, when they're talking about the five cents per copy, mm -hmm. we already are paying that a month for copies, and there is a budget already in the maintenance of equipment for that, for what we It's all factored in already. Yeah. So oh, okay. it, it, that, that additional expense, it's not, a, it's not an additional expense. We already 
have it in the budget and have been paying for it for the last several years. And that okay. that extra expense, just to be clear to Blaise's point, is that's not a uh, capital expense. Yes. You know, that's more that's of a, maintenance. Right, right. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the, right. month, the month we charge for copies, we've been doing that for the last five, mm -hmm. six years, yeah. as long as I've been here. And so that's not an additional expense on top of 31000 Okay, 31000 is really just for the hardware yes. piece of it, pretty much, right? 30784 yeah. yeah. That's for the, the machine. The hardware, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Also from page 60, <coughs> the copy we're recommending is not the cheapest, mm -hmm. and we don't have to go into, into joint comment on why we're not recommending the... I think just because we've had good success with that and that model and... I think that that's what Mark, why Mark recommended it. Yeah. For something that is utilized often, I feel like you get what you pay for. Yeah, we need reliability on and that. And it can be such a roadblock to people's jobs. Right. At least in my experience. Yeah, I think he he believes that um, it's a higher quality machine, and we were familiar with it. We've had good success with it. So. Reliability. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Someone want to make a motion to approve the purchase of the copier for $30,784? So moved. I like copiers. Second. second. You're a second. All right. It's money, so go around. Michelle? Yes. Mary? Yes. Ella? Yes. Mira? Yes. Shabnam? Yes. That's 6 nothing. that passes. Thank you very much. All right, on to uh, page 63, the non-action. Right, exactly. Um, so those of you who have been here um, last year and the years before recently, this is um, kind of just a formality, basically, where we're required to um, decide annually whether or not we will participate in or opt out of the state's non-resident fee program. It doesn't even apply to us because we don't have an un unserved adjacent area um, to us other than golf and they actually um, have go to Glenview School so really they would be going to Glenview Public Library to ask for non-resident cards you know so it it doesn't apply to us it, we don't see it you know so um, We've asked numerous times, do we still, does our board still have to take action? And they were like, we'd appreciate it if the board just take um, action to decline participa participation. So, yeah. We haven't received any complaints from anybody about not participating, right? This is pretty much a non-issue. Yeah, it's a non-issue. Okay, right. I just want to make sure that there wasn't some type of, you know, we're getting emails. No, from I've never this? heard a single comment about this, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, didn't know. Yeah. Just a little Okay. Other questions, comments? If not, we can just do <clears throat> voice vote to approve the library's declining participation in the non resident fee program. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so that passes again okay. 6 nothing. Thank you. All right, I think now we're going to go into closed session yes. and mm -hmm. discuss personnel matters. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back and do the closed meeting minutes okay. and things after that. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong, we'll all step out. You should, okay. all non board members should step okay. out for this discussion. Sure. Um, we have to vote to go into closed session. Oh, yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> Mary, would you like to? Oh, yeah, I'll make a motion to go into closed session. We should based cite on, the yeah, criteria. Based on, what did you say? It's, uh, it's the discussion. word, it's it's a, Personnel matter. It's 122C1. It's the performance of an individual. Um, performance of an individual. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of going into closed session? Aye. 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 We are now. <clears throat>